our facil is uh, we celebrated our 65th anniversary last year. It's uh, one of the oldest uh, still existing LGBTQI organizations in the world. We have around uh, 7,000 members and uh, approximately 40 branches uh, in Sweden. And we also have a big international work uh, where we work with uh, other LGBTQI organizations around the world to help them. Uh, we also have an activity called Newcomers for uh, well, newly arrived refugees to Sweden where they can come and meet other LGBTQ people and to get help with uh, social questions and uh, if they have a problem in their housing we try to help out as good as we can. And in Sweden there is people who today work in NGOs who previously worked in politics and people who work in politics who are elected officials who come from NGO and NGO background. And I think that is an important exchange. We should have people that comes from an NGO perspective that you know, is very passionate about human rights that can be in politics. And also we need the experience from politics in our NGOs to know both the formal process of politics, how our laws made, how our policies made, but also the informal parts of politics. How do you create a relationship? What is acceptable? What is not acceptable? How do you get in touch with people? One important thing is, is the context with the politics. When it comes to equality at the workplace, uh, we work a lot with uh, conversations. We have dialogues with uh, both politicians both from the government coalition and the opposition. We also uh, work together with unions. I think we have good relationship with, with the unions. We worked in projects together to uh, try and identify the problems that LGBTQI people meet in the workplace and also to see how can we create a better work environment. Uh, and we also, of course, uh, meet with uh, representatives of uh, employers organizations, which is also something important. Then we also work with education, uh, where we offer both the certification of workplaces, which is a bigger program. We started our uh, education programs in 2008, and it started out on a pretty small scale, but it's grown every year. The education program is that we offer many different types of trainings. Our most uh, our most spot one is the certification process. It stretches from six months up to one year, where we meet uh, four times in the whole working group, and then we meet in a smaller group, maybe four times, four or five times. So during these big meetings, where we meet everyone at the workplace, we give lectures on relevant subjects and topics that they choose from. We talk about norm criticism, we talk about actually really any type of area that they find relevant for their type of workplace. We go to the healthcare system personnel, we go to schools, we go to municipality workers. So whatever they feel that they need to know about LGBTQ that is related to their work, we try to offer it to them as well. So we work a lot with uh, making them and helping them find the purpose for doing this training because if they only do it and they just show up and then leave, it doesn't give much impact. So we work a lot with uh, putting the training down to their workplaces and making sure that it stays very relevant. But in the end, when we give our um, evaluations in the end, we 95% would recommend the training to someone else. My name is Christer Fellman. I'm the initiator and founder of the Rainbow Senior Association, uh, which I uh, started to work with about eight years ago. So we've been here on the spot uh, with 28 departments for about two years. The idea started uh, with me going eight years ago to a seminar at uh, the Stockholm Pride. There was a huge interest there about elderly people in the LGBT uh, group and their biggest wish to, in the end of the 70s and beginning of the 80s, to um, reach the goal of uh, uh, housing for elderly people. We're now standing in the entrance hall at Sandhamsgatan 6 on Gjärdet in Stockholm. Rainbow over Gjärdet, we are calling it. But uh, 
when because of the state owner when they renovate their houses they put one percent of that cost into a foundation for art so they they hired uh, an artist a photogra photographer named Annika Carlson Rickson uh, uh, and she is also she belongs to the um, LBT group and she took some photos which were in a photo series called Here Are We. It includes members from the two associations, the Golden Ladies, which contains uh, members, lesbian, elderly women, and the Gay Senior, which are the group of elderly men. And this is one of the first photographs, which is very nice, I think. So let's go and I'll show you the rest. Here we have the hairdresser, which we can use if we want to. We have a care central with uh, doctors and nurses uh, on this floor, which is open daytime. This is a senior housing, and that means uh, from the age 55. 30% women living in 28 apartments, and the mid-age are 68 years. Here I can show you the yard. Uh, which is not for the moment so flowering, but it will be. And it, it uh, will be a secluded green room, which is very quiet and very warm. And, um, and out here we can have barbecues and summer parties. There is one uh, in June for, for these two blocks. And uh, I really look forward to it. And it's crawling distance home if you get too drunk. <laughs> Shall we go to our living room? So this is the common area. We have a kitchen, we have a small office, we have a computer, we have a living room with television. And here is the place where we used to meet on Saturdays at 10 o'clock to solve the uh, music quiz. And we drink coffee together and have our morning sandwich if we want to. And this is the living room which you can um, book, watch movies here and use this for private parties or, or other occasions. The board in the Rainbow Senior Association used to book this room for their meetings. And in here we have the kitchen, small kitchen, but a big freezer and a cooler <laughs> where we have we keep all the champagne and Russian caviar. There are many dogs here, dogs and cats. We have two older ladies from Finland. They first moved into a smaller apartment, 45 square meters. But they had two gigantic. Cats. They are the biggest <laughs> cats I ever seen. <laughs> Seiya and Orviki has the two biggest cats, and they are really huge, like this. <laughs> so, and one day the cats was tired of it all. They said, "We need to move to a bigger <laughs> apartment." <laughs> so now they have moved to a bigger apartment, a two-room flat, 70 square meters. <laughs> the cats are very pleased. <laughs> the rent is high, but what should you do? You do everything for your four-legged four friend with a tail. <laughs> we have also a room for wheelchairs, but this is how it looks today. Look at all these sporty cars and sporty mountain bikes. Well, I will invite you to my apartment. So welcome to the Pleasure Dome. This is my favorite way, of my favorite living. I really enjoy this apartment. Well, I like to have it simple. I just want to have the things that I am using, really nothing else. I want it to be very easy to clean, so I don't, I don't need anything else. People are asking, when I come here, journalists from other countries, is that, well, why do you need a special housing for gay people? And why, why do you do it? Why, 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 why have you started this project? And, and 
And there is only one simple answer on that, because we can. I think it's wonderful for, for journalists who comes here from, from, from Europe to show this very good example and uh, to be able to help and to encourage LGBT people in other countries to keep up the good work and hopefully we, we will be there in the future and we can all meet, we can have an alliance of, of associations for elderly gay people and bring them out of the closet and so that we can all be seen and the meaning of life is of course to live until you die, which we all want to. Dovidienia! <laughs> <laughs>